Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hello. Hey, everybody say how good Carrie's hair looks. Thank you. I got it all cut off. She got her. After. She lightened her load. I lightened my load. <laughs> After our hair conversation last week, we thought we'd just continue it this week. This is now a hair um, live tutorial. <laughs> right, right, right. We're not going to talk about hair. Okay, today we are going to blow some hippie noodles. Um, we are going to talk about something so basic, so simple, but so difficult that we've never talked about it before. And that is four ways to hang signs. So we all have wood signs, we have MDF signs, we have all the things, mm -hmm. and it is remarkably difficult to manage all the materials. There's so many materials these days yeah. that it makes everything hard. We have got some squeaky cool tricks to show you. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. We I'm do. Excited. I do have a couple announcements first. So yep. hold on to your hippie noodles. Hold on to all the hippie noodles. Um, you're going to want to hold on to them because they're going to be blown here pretty soon. Yep. Um, if you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, be sure to do that. We have a, so much. A bajillion. Yeah. A ba it feels like a bajillion. It feels like a bajillion yeah, yeah. videos. <laughs> yeah, how many is a bajillion? <laughs> It's a lot. That's yeah. how many we have. And um, we, <laughs> we have so many <laughs> great lessons and tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. And um, even if you aren't sure you're going to like the finished product, yeah, yeah. Um, because some of them are really niche, like, um, like might, this one. Like I... Patty calls this a sports ball sign. It's so this a sports is, ball <laughs> sign. So this is totally not something that she would paint for her house, no. but the um but that using the stripe and making the detail on that um doing the drop shadow you're yes. going to learn something with every one of the videos Agreed. um it's very much like um you can bake and you can bake bread and you can bake muffins and you can bake you know uh cookies cupcakes what was it cookies 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 um yes but you know what i'm saying like you can learn things mm -hmm. when baking or you can learn things when painting yeah. so you just want the learning lesson mm -hmm. and if you don't think that you want to commit to subscribing then just give us a thumbs up because youtube loves the algorithm thing we have to fight that like yes. when you're small people <laughs> you gotta like fight the fight um, so that's our video from this past week. It is already on our YouTube channel. You can check it out. And then Patty's gonna um, give you our sneak peek of what we're doing this week. I had it turned around because we're being so secretive. Dun dun dun, you guys. Legit, hardcore. I love this We thing. love this one. Okay. Ta da! So this one is super fun. We do a background with our ugly sweater. Ugly sweater, pattern, stencil. And so we have a couple porch signs that we've done with backgrounds, but we've really- We've never done the ugly sweater. We've never done the ugly sweater. So this good. is a, such an underutilized stencil yeah. of ours. But then we also add some banding to it. So um, then we have the sweater banding mm -hmm. detail right there, and it's at the bottom as well. And then- we also glittered a wooden snowflake embellishment that we glued on, and I think it's just jazzy as all all snot. Yeah, I don't know how jazzy snot is, but today it's we're jazzy. making it really jazzy. So yes. this is going to be our video for this weekend. It will be released on Saturday morning, and we have um, on Saturday we are releasing a new tutorial, a new combo set, and an entire new alphabet. So Saturday is going to be a Indeed. really big day. Yeah. And um, Dustin made the alphabet for us, and it has six different sizes. So Neat. you are going to be able to use it from four inches mm -hmm. all the way up to 18 inches. Nice. You yes. guys, it's the alphabet stencils. We have a bunch of them. We've got them small for card making mm -hmm. and personalizing, and then up to the big sizes. So you want to check those out. Um, it's a big deal. Yeah. So um, we're kind of a big deal. So we are kind of a kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. Some days. Speaking of big deals, okay. we are talking about wood signs today and how to hang your signs. So today we are having a surface sale. It's 40% off and I'll share the link. And you can stock up on all your surfaces since you're going to learn how to hang them. <laughs> well, and something to know about how we size our wood surfaces. Um, we size them to scale to our stencil sizes. So um, when you are, um, when you're buying 
the wood surfaces that we have, then a whole bunch of things will actually scale to fit them. So you can go and find this wood shape mm -hmm. and then find this stencil that will fit it as well. So that's a kind of a neat, we're almost like granimals, if anybody remembers that back in the day. Um, where you, yeah, I know, you you were the one that was wearing the granimals. Um, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's where you can pick things that go with each other, size-wise, scale-wise, color-wise, that kind of thing, and that's what we have done. Yeah. So, yeah, it's super cool. That is cool. Okay, I am... We're ready. I'm good when you So today, good. no apron, because guess what? We're not painting today. We are going to get busy, and we are going to talk about four ways to hang your signs. So we're going to start with the obvious one, and that is a command strip, okay? So we all know about command strips, but I'm going to show you some things about command strips that you do not know. And I want, please do the little thing when we blow your hippie noodle because we've got some tips in here mm -hmm. that are going to be amazing. Um, put comments down below. Um, that also, algorithm, algorithm, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> Hate talking about it, but we have to because otherwise it doesn't happen. So we're going to talk about command strips. Um, one of the things that's cool about command strips, and actually, hang on, I'm going this direction. We are going to show you how to hang your first sign and then how to change it out easily with your seasonal sign. Okay, so I have a kitchen sign. Okay, so when you first hang your kitchen sign, what you're going to do is you're going to put... I cut these up, so these are something like a dollar a piece. They're so expensive. I buy them in bulk um, from Amazon, I think. They, I don't know which thing. I, ha I got share it. Okay, yeah. she's got the link there. And um, we've got uh, affiliate links to Amazon so that you guys can do the thing um, so, um, so that you can check out the links. But they're so expensive. And this is rated for something like 16 pounds or something like that. Well, this is obviously not even a pound, okay? But the ones that are lighter weight don't really hold very well. So I want the hold, but I don't need the length. So what we do, is so we take the command strips and I do thirds. So I just kind of roughly, guesstimately, making up words today like crazy, okay? And so then what you do is you take your command strip and the square part goes on the back of your sign and you just put it wherever you need it to be okay and there's really no rhyme it's, or reason doesn't to have to be centered it. you don't want yeah. them real close together because then you're gonna have less grasp yeah and there is a rhyme to where I put them I always put them at the top and I don't know what the um, scientific reason is but if you hang something at the top the weight will pull it back to the wall. So you do want to put your command strips closer to the top that you don't want them in the middle or anything like that. So now what you do in order to get this on the wall, this one with the stretchy thing is what will save your paint on your wall. So now we push that down really strongly. Okay, so all the Velcro is engaged. Then we peel that puppy off. This is where one of the, um, the blow your mind, blow your hippie noodle, will come in and then we've got this lovely pen level which is super amazing I'm gonna go over here you won't be able to hear me so I'm not gonna really talk but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put the level on top of there until it's straight and then I'm gonna push it to the wall and the tiny level is just something that's amazing for it being light and you having two hands up on your sign and you can just set it right on there Super and now fun. when i do when i hang mine i typically just do a slight crunch on the command strip and, and then, then when, when i put it, it on the wall you can hear i the hear crunch. and i yeah. feel the crunch and yeah. it's really satisfying and i know it's on there really good and i tend to give it a punch yeah and but the crunch would be very helpful yeah. i agree with that okay so now that's my everyday kitchen sign okay so now say I want to do hello fall the neat thing about doing like a round sign or a square sign or a rectangle that's the same shape is you can go find a seasonal something I can pop that puppy off that wall and then I can um, replace it with this and then just keep rotating things out and do the seasonal change but knowing that my square works in my square space that makes sense yeah Excuse me. 
So we'll take this off and then I'll show you what to do. <clears throat> so my little command strips stay on here. Then, not this one. Then I take two of my squares and I go and put them on those command strips. Right, so the first time we did it, we put it on the surface because putting it on the surface is going to be the easiest way to get it up initially. But then now, instead of taking off all the command strips and wasting command strips, you're just gonna add the side that'll go to the board to what's already on there and then plop it on. Level, sign, So there we have our seasonal change. So hippie noodles all over the place, breaking down, doing the thing, because that is the way you save so much money on command strips yeah. forever. Like that is amazing. So that is number one. That's number so one. So let's go to. Number two is our handy dandy stapler. Ah, okay. So I would like to say that we, so we do a lot of MDF. Okay, um, and MDF comes in standard sizes like quarter inch and, and eighth inch and things like that. And the quarter inch is what we prefer to paint on because it stays really flat. Um, MDF in today's world, I don't want to show you the back of that yet. I'll show you the back of this one. In today's world, MDF is so hard and so great and so smooth. You don't have to sand it. That was the problem that everybody used to have with it. Um, it is just like a perfect ready to go piece of material that you can recycle and you know move through your your you don't have to use a whole piece of like walnut or um, you know so like a really fine wood so you can use a pulp wood that's a recycled product it's just so amazing however you can't easily staple into MDF because it's only a quarter inch thick and they really don't make things that are less than that Okay, so we discovered, this is one of my hippie noodle moments. Um, we discovered that um, you can use a U stapler. So this is one that has a little indenty U shape to it. It's not a flat one, it's a U one, and it goes over the shape of the rope. But then when I did that, I found that my rope would slide out of my staple, and that was a problem. So what we have done, and I'm gonna do the back of this. This is one of our projects that we did. Oh, and I'm gonna laugh at the back of this. I've got one, two, three, four um, command strips and something painted on the back of it. So you're gonna laugh, chuckle with me, <sighs> whatever. We're just gonna use it, we're gonna go with it. Ah, well that command strip is so stuck, I don't know what's going on. Okay, but so I want to staple on the back of this and have the little hangy bit because I don't want to have knots tied through this and drill through it. That's one of the ones I'm gonna show you next. Um, but I just wanna have that hangy rope. So we're gonna go on the back, and there's what I'm talking about, like things everywhere, like it's mad. Um, okay, and then cool little tip, when you have your rope, go ahead and give yourself a little tapey tape because that will keep it from unraveling and making it into a big ginormous mess. And then we get our scissors and we're gonna just take two little command strip moments there. Could almost be the command strip um, lesson today. So command we're, strips, if you would like to sponsor us. Yeah, you know, command strip 3M, <laughs> we love you. Thank you very much. Um, so this one, you will want to make that pretty even. Where did my other one go? Glasses are gonna have to get engaged so if you put a little command strip on here it's basically the same and then you staple into the command strip so this has got you where that little u thing is you want to just go right on top of there loud noise oh, and it does want to slide just a little bit I'm gonna give it one more pop Still sliding. Arrgh! I'm gonna do the other side, yeah. So we did this both ways earlier, and 
I put the sticky side up. Okay. And it worked both ways, but we'll try it that way. Okay, and still sliding, Steve. What the heck? Can you staple through the... Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's sliding. Why is that sliding? Can you loop it up? Ah, uh, so yeah, you know what? Actually, brilliant, because um, Ted actually was showing me that, and I forgot that I heard that. Yeah, Ted. And knew that. I know. You guys think of like. Okay, let's get. That is stuck to the back of that. So let's take one more piece of this. And what you do is you just take a little loopy-doo. And now that will not slip. Yay, group thinking. And since I can, I will. And good night, Charlie Brown. Where are all my pieces? And then Beth also recommended adding a knot at the end of the rope before yeah, stapling as well. Yeah, I didn't want a knot. That was like one of the things I did not want to do because I didn't want the lump. Okay, and ta-da. So nice, not heavy, going anywhere now. not going anywhere, but look how good that looks. And then you can hang that wherever you want to. Um, and I love that it picks up the detail mm -hmm. of the trim. And I love that it doesn't have a bunch of bulk back there. Yeah. Okay. So, and if you need to remove these things, um, these little um, wire needle nose plier things, I was able to, with my giant strengthy arms, <laughs> I was able to pull them out myself. So um, that is, I think, really good news. So I'm going to hang this over here somewhere. We're going to lean that over there somewhere. What is it? Is this a good time to show it if you don't want it to show? Ah, on Mr. Pumpkin here? No, behind the, the oh, right. sign. Thank you, Steve. Yes. I um, actually predicted I was not going to remember to, to show you this. Okay, so with tall porch signs, and this is a small porch sign, um, because usually they're six foot tall, and this one is only four foot tall. So when you have something four foot, you might lose a lot of the detail down below if you have like a crate or something like that behind it. But in this case, you can hide the hanger, and then I use the same technique, and that did not slide out, so I don't know why. On this one, it didn't slide out either. Right. So I, well, maybe I'm not pushing hard enough. It's good that it did, because now we, now, we, now we learned. Well, but we forgot about the little loopy thing, and so that is actually like my own hippie noon right Yeah, now, well, right? and I also like the, the hiding aspect of it. If you already have a nail or a screw in your wall, and you don't want to add another one, yeah. you can do a little Yeah, a just loop. do a little bridge moment. This could be flatter, it could be arched, it can be whatever you need it to be to get it to your height that you needed, knowing that you can pull those staples out and re-staple it for a different height mm -hmm. nail. Screw, um, we've got a little screw right here in this wall, and earlier I was trying to hook something on it and my loop and my stuff wasn't adjusting, but with this technique you could flatten it, lengthen it, lower it, heighten it, yeah. do all the things. So, yes. Good Yay. job, Steve. Yay! And right. don't you love, this is one of our very popular uh, yes. videos right now. All right, number three, we are moving right along, is drilling a hole with a drill press. Ooh, okay. So we are going to go into this project right here. So drill press. Um, Dustin, if you can get the little view of that guy over there he is on he's an amazon affiliate link for us and he's super cheap like um 120 140 i have the link right here he like is 105 105 like it's a ridiculous number and we've got him on an old you could put him on an old like um dresser and then screw and bolt him down to the top or this is on a sink base that did not work for us and we couldn't return it so um, we just put plywood on the top and made it into our little drill stand here in the studio. Okay, so this is a really cool project that Carrie did. So we've got a standard buffalo plaid background and then you can replace it with different 
shapes and different icons so that you can make it seasonal. So that's a super fun take on that. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use some of our white rope and we're actually gonna, let's put this guy back to bed. Take your tape, put it right back over it and he won't unravel. So we're gonna take our white rope and we're gonna drill into here. So the first thing you'll do is you'll measure and I'm gonna use my plaid. I'm gonna use the center of both of my black squares to, this looks like it's evenly spaced. I'm gonna use right in there in the center. And I'm gonna walk over here and then Carrie's gonna oh, talk. Oh, so I get to talk. I have a long list of words. Um, Dustin is gonna follow Patty over with the camera and I'm gonna read from my notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we already have our board marked and measured. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to make sure that you have the right size bit on your um, press. And then you're going to make sure that it is centered to go through the hole. And then we use a backer board so that you don't blow out the back of your wood. This can be um, any scrap piece that you have. We just use the same piece yes, over and over. Just a really um, thin piece of MDF. That's a really good example of what can happen to the back of your board. And yeah, you definitely don't want that to happen after you've worked so hard to paint. And then after you that, you are going to position it where you have your marks and put that right under your bit. And then you're gonna turn it on and you're going to plunge through the hole. You'll blow off the excess wood, the excess shavings. And then the back looks beautiful. And the back looks good and not blown out. Uh, turn it off before you move your project because you could scratch the front of it. Okay. Okay, so then we come over here, we take our string, we thread our string through. Mine is a little bit. You can tape the ends of your string to get it through. I'm probably going to need to do that. All right, do we have any questions? I feel like this is a kind of watch and learn kind of moment, but. Um, we did have Alicia asked, are there command hooks that you can hang from the wall as well? There are. Um, we just, we prefer the strips. So between here and over at our um, boardroom 46, our brick and mortar. Um, painting studio we have hundreds hundreds <laughs> of signs hung I mean it probably is like um, like I, four or five hundred yeah, signs have, it's um, so many how, how tall are the ceilings over there Dustin oh, six, like 16 so our, feet. we have ceilings that are 16 feet tall we start the signs around I don't know eight foot or so so we have our entire walls from eight foot up are yeah, so eight eight, 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 eight foot by eight, and it's a 50 50 by 25 50 by 25 room and it's and eight feet round, of signs. Yeah, yeah, so we have a lot of signs hung, so we prefer the command strips where we can just cut for and clean we, yeah 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 um, okay so now i'm making this knot and i'm kind of like pushing it towards where i want it to hang and then i will cut excess off and then fray it. So you always want to, and you can do one a little shorter so you don't have like all equal equal. And give it some little fray fray. Fray fray. And there you have a drilled hanging hole. Yay. Number three. Number three. Okay. All right, number four. Okay, hippie noodles. Is this metal is fun. hangers. Yeah, this is wire really fun. No wire hangers. <laughs> what is it? No wire hangers. <laughs> okay, so we are going to move these items away and come over here. Okay, so what is the problem with one of these little sawtooth hangers? Now, you can glue these. Um, and they will hold if you use the right glue for whatever you've got going on in the back of your board. Um, I have not had the best experience with glue and sawtooth hangers. Um, just I haven't explored it enough and done the thing. Today what I did, and then one other thing, is this nail is a half inch long. My wood is 
not not thick enough okay so how do I give myself some extra thickness what I did was I used these little their little um, coaster feet okay so they're little bumpers for wood products wood projects and I put those on the back and which project do I have that will do hey I didn't give myself one of these okay we're gonna make the B B R see what we have you can do on this oh let's do that I love this I this is one of my favorite 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 okay so um, this is a round fall sign it's got the raised hello word now one thing we want to do when we're doing something on like something here that has this like raised details we want to put a piece of MDF so that it makes everything level okay so when I see what I've got going on here make sure I'm upside right Amy I don't want to tell on myself but there may have been times in my life that I have maybe not made sure things were upside right so I'm just just gonna say that I think just. we've all been there raise your hand in the comments if you've been there before <laughs> <laughs> I built a um, a rocking chair for I think my oldest son and I put the one thing on backwards or upside down mm -hmm. and I had the holes forever in the front of it well we even did a, a paint at boardroom mm -hmm. with on Friday on our Fridays we do like little projects and we took my stepdaughter and guys like I work here and I still didn't have her put it the right way <laughs> so her string was still upside down oh, no. on her project <laughs> we made it work I mean if, yeah we made it work but <laughs> okay so then what you're gonna do with this and this is gonna be two ways I'm saving the kind of the coolest one for last I'm going to put the center of that there and then I'm going to super cool trick is to take your needle nose pliers and you're going to put it right there on your nail. Oh, we have a lot of hands raised, so we're not the only ones. Okay, so then we hold that. And how stinking cool is that technique? So that gives you a little buffer. You're not busting through the front of the sign, keeping the wood level. These are all such great tips. Okay, and I need nail. You can also use these little guys. Um, I took little squares of the command strips. You can use that as well. So both of those worked. Um, and now we need another little footy foot. What is your favorite way that you found today to hang your MDF or your wood signs? I want to hear about this. Um, and if we blew your hippie noodle, give us a heart or something. Okay, gonna go this way. I did not think myself, when we started doing this, I did not think I would be able to get that nail in that MDF without pre-drilling a hole. That was what I was taught mm -hmm. about MDF, is that you had to pre-drill. And so I am, that blew my mind. Okay, and you do want to make sure that you are hammering not on the little. Okay, so um, now we can hang that. Amelia asked, why not use the sawtooth hangers that have edges that you can hammer into the board without using nails? So those are also thicker. So you, I could not find those at our hardware store. Remember, we live in Gallup Police, <laughs> Ohio. Um, Gallup Police, Ohio has 4,000 people um, in our city or in our village. We're not even a city anymore. Um, and we have 40,000 in our county, which is a really big county in the country. Um, so yeah, we don't have resources. <laughs> So those are fancy schmancy things yeah, that you so can find in you, the city. You totally <laughs> yeah. probably could do that and it would be fine. If you do use the salt tooth hangers that have the edge that you can hammer, please let us know yeah. and we will. Um... All right, final, final, final hippie noodle blower is I'm gonna get out my little Mountain Dew can, okay? And we're gonna take the top off. Ah, Steve, he, Steve was like, why are we using Mountain Dew? You don't seem like a Mountain Dew drinker. Um, our BJ on our team, she does this technique all the time when she wants to hang something. So what she does, I'm just going to use this little command strip version of this. 
she doesn't use the command strip version. She just like doesn't put the ha the nail all the way through. But and we agreed that it needed to be on the front side, not the back side. And then I'm gonna take a little nail. They do sell the nails, and I had yeah, there in a whole bunch of little half inch things. So you can use this trick all day long. But that's what she uses for all of her sign hanging in her house. And I thought that was brilliant. So we get our little thing going here. Is my head totally in the way? Okay. Yep. And that's what I wondered if that would happen. I don't have quite a big enough. There we go. I just hit it kind of sideways. And now that will hang your sign just perfectly. So that is the four ways to hang signs using all kinds of contraptions and, and squirrely doos. Yes. So many have the squirrely things. Doos. All, all right, guys. So <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> 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 That's funny. We uh, hammered just a little too hard in here. Uh, guys, see you on Tuesday next week at noon. Mm -hmm. And we had so much fun today. Thank you so much.